There is an interesting diagram that scientists use to describe matter as it goes from one form to another. And they simply call this a phase diagram. In your mind's eye, if you can picture a square with a point in the middle divided approximately into thirds, radiating from that center point, and one third being a material, in this case we'll use water. So water sometimes appears as a solid. That would be in one third of our little diagram. Sometimes it appears as a liquid. That would be in another third. Sometimes it appears as a vapor or a gas, and that would be another third. And there's a line that divides each of those expressions of water, a line that divides the water from the liquid and liquid from the gas. Well, I use water as an example because it's an easy example, and we could do this with any compound. As water experiences new parameters, new temperatures and pressures, its expression is different and its chemistry is the same. It's still H2O. It's still water. It simply is expressing a new way. And I think that a phase diagram may be a beautiful way in the 20th century idiom to view the changes that are happening to the earth right now. Rather than temperature and pressure on the earth, we're talking about the magnetics and the frequency. We've just spoken of those two parameters. They're changing. And as those parameters change, earth must change to accommodate those parameters. As earth goes through these different expressions of magnetics and frequency, Earth is going through a phase transition, much like water going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas. It's still water. It's expressing differently. It's still Earth, and we're expressing differently. Well, one of the elements that has been forgotten in the Western traditions is along with the Earth, our bodies are changing. And we're reminded in the ancient traditions a very simple truth that our bodies, the physical form of our bodies, are made of nothing more and nothing less than the elements of this earth. And that's it. We can't be anything that we don't find in the earth, different proportions perhaps, and we are earth. Well, now our own science is showing us earth is changing. If we acknowledge that we are earth, then we must be changing as well. And that is precisely what these ancient traditions say. They say that your body will change at the time that the earth changes. The Essenes were poets and so eloquently described the relationship between the human form, the physical form of our bodies, and this nebulous form that we call spirit. They reference electromagnetic forces that they call the angels of this world. Engineers don't like the word angel. So you can substitute the word electromagnetic force for angel and you've got a wonderful story regarding our relationship with the forces of this world. And what the Essenes suggest is that we came to this world as a nebulous field, a consciousness, a waveform of experience without form, without shape. And as we came into this world, we were greeted by the forces of this world and they acknowledge the forces are a consciousness, that the wind, the water, the light of our sun, and the elements of our earth are a living consciousness. In the Essene traditions, those four aspects of the earth united in what they call a holy union, a sacred marriage. The forces gave themselves to this form that we call spirit, and it was the union of the two. It was the marriage of spirit and matter that became the experience that we know as our bodies. And we continue that experience today. So from the Essene perspective, we are living this marriage, this union. And as long as we honor the marriage, we enjoy the use of the elements of this world as our bodies. And we experience through our bodies. Well, again, these traditions say that at this time, earth is changing, our bodies are earth, our bodies are changing. Some people during this time will respond to the great changes in fear. And in fear, they dishonor the union between spirit and matter, and their bodies respond in kind. And that's the experience, that's the consequence of that outcome. It's without judgment of right, wrong, good, or bad, 
When we fear the unknown and when we live our lives based on that fear, our body simply expresses that fear through its physical characteristics in our world. And they also remind us that others would embrace the changes with joy as a great opportunity to create something brand new and their bodies also mirror the consequences of that choice through health, through vitality, through transcending the great challenges of life that are occurring at this time. Neither of these paths is right, wrong, or good, or bad. They simply are opportunities to experience. As we allow for the possibility of honoring the union between spirit and matter, through the course of this great change in history, then we invite ourselves to go through this phase transition of the earth. Remember, our bodies are earth. As our bodies go through this phase transition, we realize the greatest possibility of what it means to be human. And we may have had reference beings in our past that demonstrated for us what that possibility is all about. This clearly is beyond science as we know it today. It's beyond ancient mysticism. It's beyond religion. It is a technology. We're talking about an inner technology of allowing for the possibility of body and spirit to remain as one moving through the great change of this time in history, going through the phase transition of one expression to another.